Hi, and welcome to Internet Anonymity 101. We're going to learn how to become anonymous on the internet, or at least as anonymous as today's technology allows. Anonymity can come in handy if you want to protect yourself from prying bosses, hackers, or oppressive political regimes. First, let's look at the basics. Lesson 1, how computers communicate and what they know about you. To learn how computers talk to each other, let's pretend I want to send an email to my friend Jackie. I use Gmail, so to access my email, I type www.gmail.com into my browser and sign in. I live in Chicago, and Jackie does too, just a few blocks away from me. But when I send her an email, it has to travel through something like 30 different computers before she gets to read it. It goes through computers run by my internet service provider, and computers run by my internet service provider's internet service provider, and computers run by Google, and then back through a bunch more computers, and then to Jackie. The problem is that along the way, other people could read the email too. Anyone who has access to the intermediary computers could download a copy of the email and have a look. They could steal your private information. That could be bad. Luckily, to protect yourself, in a lot of cases, all you need is one little letter. That brings us to part two, HTTPS. A lot of us don't pay much attention to the part of a web address before the www. But these four letters tell your computer how to send information to other computers. HTTP tells your computer that the information you're sending does not need to be written in secret code. So if I go to gmail.com, my email travels in plain English and anyone who gets a copy of it can read it, no problem. But HTTPS is different. HTTPS is secure. It encrypts your communication by turning your plain English into a bunch of gobbledygook that hackers and middlemen cannot decipher. A lot of websites, including Gmail and also Facebook, have secure versions of their sites that you can access by adding an S to the HTTP. Look for the little lock icon in your browser bar to see if your internet connection is secure. For those of you at work, HTTPS can help you sneak past some office firewalls. So if Gmail and Facebook won't load at work, try their secure sites instead. Now on to anonymity with proxies and Tor. HTTPS scrambles your emails and hacker-proofs your private communications, but it does not hide your IP address. Your IP address tells the computers you're communicating with some important information about you, such as what country and city you're in, who your internet service provider is, and even, in some cases, where exactly you are. Based on this, bosses and oppressive governments can track which sites you're visiting and also restrict your access to some information. So if you want to watch YouTube at work, Try something like ninjacloak.com. This free service lets you connect to blocked websites by hiding your IP address and replacing it with a different one. This is called a proxy. Proxies connect to restricted sites so you don't have to. If you use a proxy, a boss who's tracking your internet usage will only see that you connected to ninjacloak.com. He won't see that ninjacloak then connected to YouTube. But this isn't foolproof. Some people need even more security. If you live somewhere where censorship is the norm, where information you send over the internet could endanger you, what you need is Tor. Tor is an application that bounces your communications around a worldwide network of computers that also have Tor. It's like a proxy, but puts even more computers between you and the website you want to access, so it's harder for anyone to figure out who you are. To get Tor, visit torproject.org and download the required software. Then follow the instructions to set it up. Even if you don't think you need this much anonymity, you could still use Tor to relay traffic for others in the Tor network who do. To find out more about the many uses of Tor, visit torproject.org slash Tor users. That brings us to the end of our lesson. Follow those steps and you should be secure and anonymous on the internet.